You're watching Monty TV. I'm Jackie Karsh, joined now by Andrea Gez. She is an American astronomer and professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at UCLA and possibly the coolest person here at the Montgomery Summit. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. It's my pleasure. Where does tech and astrophysics and black holes collide? You have some really exciting things going on in your space. So the work that I do is absolutely technology-driven discovery. We use um, the largest telescope in the world and develop new technologies for getting very sharp pictures from these telescopes that are on the ground. It allows a, the telescopes on the ground to act like they're in space. People don't usually think of the technology that goes into space and travel because now we're so tech focused on entrepreneurs and startups, but it's really where it all started. I mean, you've been developing technology for decades. So, you know, where, where do you think your field particularly is heading? Well, in astronomy, our field is all about understanding the universe. So we're developing better tools for seeing great, great distances and interpreting these measurements. So it's about, uh, for me, it's about getting very sharp pictures. So taking the blurring effects out of the Earth's atmosphere and making the most precise measurements that we can make from here on the ground because we cannot, we cannot travel out to the distant reaches of the universe. The parts of the universe that I'm interested in are 26,000 light years away. That means if we're That's far. traveling this <laughs> way, it's really far. Um, so precision is, it's all about precision. Why is it important for you to develop this new way of discovering those black holes? Why can't we use the traditional method? Well, the traditional method didn't allow us to actually study or discover, rather, supermassive black holes at, at the, to the level that we've been able to do with this new technology. We've enhanced the case for supermassive black hole by a factor of 10 million. Think about anything else that you would like to increase the efficiency or the effectiveness. And if you could do that by a factor of 10 million, you'd probably work pretty hard at it. In the case of the technology that we use, lots of the progress was made through the military. Turns out the military also cares about looking up and down through the atmosphere uh, and seeing very sharply. So they had technology that was classified. We didn't know about it. So as the astronomers were making a lot of progress, it was declassified. And so the astronomers got to make this huge jump forward um, in, this, in this arena. There's been so much talk about machine learning and artificial intelligence and all of that. Um, but that's something that scientists, especially in the astrophysics world to explore the universe, have been using for so long. And what can you almost advise an entrepreneur about that kind of technology to utilize machine learning to the advantage of the human race? It's certainly true that in astronomy and astrophysics, we're really interested in advanced um, data analytics. Yeah, because we, you can't be there, you know, mapping things out on a, a chalkboard. Right, so uh, we see technologies in two arenas. Um, one is in making the measurement. So it's all about precision because you can't go there. But it's also, we have huge quantities of data. Um, so we want to be able to extract um, bits of information over time. So for instance, we've been doing this work for 20 years and we want to put together 20 years of data to measure how stars move around the center of the galaxy. There's huge amounts of data analytics that go into this. So in fact, many of our students don't go into astronomy and astrophysics, but rather they go off into industry because data analytics has become such an important field. That's good to hear. Thank you so much, Andrea. It's, it's been, been great talking with you.